Rust, like most sensible programming languages, have variables. To create a variable in Rust, we use the let keyword followed by the variable name and then we assign the value. We have now created a variable named cakes that has the value 3. We can now print this value by including it in the print line statement. If you run this program, it should print the number of cakes. If you don't specify the type, Rust will assume an I32, which is a signed 32-bit integer. Signed meaning it can be a negative value, unlike an unsigned integer, which can be zero or a positive value. To specify a type, we add a colon followed by the type after a variable name. In this case, an unsigned 8-bit integer, or in other words, a byte. Like in most programming languages, we can add two variables together. And finally, we can print this out. If we run this, we should see the number 7. And there it is. In this case, drinks will get the same type as cakes because of type inference. However, we could give drinks its own type, say a U16. However, this will not compile because we're trying to add a U8 to a U16, which are two different types. So if we run this now, we'll see an error message. If we wanted to, we could cast the cakes U8 into a U16 by using the ask keyword. So we're now saying that we should treat cakes as a U16, and this will now compile, giving us a total of 7. It is not possible to have uninitialized variables in Rust. If we try to print this value, it's going to produce an error. However, we can have what's called late bound variables, meaning we can give this a value somewhere further down the chain. And this will now compile and output one, two, three. The last thing to cover is mutability. The variables we declared so far are all immutable because we haven't said otherwise. If we were to try to change the value of cakes from three to four, it will cause an error. The way we get around this is by declaring cakes as mutable, and this will now compile. Now you know about creating and mutating variables in Rust.